So students, in the previous part we talked about causes of deforestation. Now let's talk about consequences of the deforestation. Again, very easy part is there. So let's learn it in from the textbook. Okay. So consequences of the deforestation are one of the major effect is enhanced carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere because trees that could hold a lot of carbon in their biomass are lost with deforestation. See. Forest, they fix carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis and then they produce organic matter. So in this manner, they hold lot of carbon in their body. Okay, they, they hold lot of carbon in their body. But now, when the forests are not there, that carbon will get released and all the carbon dioxide will not get fixed in their body. Okay, so in this manner, there will be lot of carbon dioxide in the air. So one major effect of deforestation is that there will be increased concentration of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and you know that increased carbon dioxide concentration will lead to greenhouse effect okay so the rate of greenhouse effect will be enhanced due to deforestation so this is the major consequence of the deforestation that increased carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere will be found okay so then uh, deforestation also causes loss of biodiversity due to habitat destruction. Okay, so the 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 wildlife which lives in the forest will lose their habitats. Okay, so in this manner, when the animal loses or when animal lose their habitat, there will be loss of biodiversity. They will die. Okay, because animal is losing their habitat, so animals will die ultimately. So there will be loss of biodiversity. Second consequence of deforestation is loss of biodiversity. Second consequence of deforestation is loss of biodiversity. Why? Because wildlife are wildlife is losing their habitat and that's why they cannot survive in other habitats. So, disruption in hydrologic cycle. See, rain, see water evaporates from the ocean, then it gets converted in form of cloud, and then clouds produce clouds. Uh, give us rain and then uh, that uh, rain enters into the water enters into the uh, land and river and then again it goes into the ocean and it, it will form clouds. This is known as hydrologic cycle. So when forests are not there, this hydrologic cycle will get disturbed. Okay? When forests are not there, the hydrologic cycle will get disturbed. Okay? So, and it will cause soil erosion. Okay? Because of because of loss of forest, there will be soil erosion. Then and may lead to desertification in extreme cases. When forests are lost, desert will be formed. Okay. So what are the consequences of deforestation? First is increased carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Second is disruption in the hydrologic cycle. Third is desertification. Fourth is catch uh, your check. Ha! Huh. Destruction of the habitat of the wildlife and loss of biodiversity. Okay. Loss of biodiversity. Destruction of the habitat of the wildlife, disruption of the hydrologic cycle, and uh, soil erosion, desertification, and increased carbon dioxide concentration in the air. These are the consequences of the deforestation. Now, what should we do? We should promote reforestation. We should promote reforestation. Okay. Other deforestation, well, what should we do? We should do reforestation. Okay. So, what is deforestation? Deforestation is the process of restoring the forest that once existed but was removed at, the, at some point of time in the past okay and reforestation may occur naturally also in the deforested area however we can speed up the process by planting the trees with due consideration to biodiversity that earlier existed in that area reforestation can occur naturally also and it can occur by human activities also so we can speed up the rate of reforestation. We can speed up the rate of reforestation by planting the new trees, considering the wildlife which was existing once in that area. So we should think about that wildlife which was living in that area, and that's why we should plant more and more trees. Okay. So, but here we are reforestation. Okay. So, so case study of people's participation in conservation of forest. See, we want to conserve our forest. We want to conserve our forest. Actually, government wants to conserve the forest. But government alone cannot conserve the forest. Government needs participation of people. 
government need particip needs participation of people to conserve the forest. Okay, so we are learning an example of people's participation in conservation of the forest. Okay, we will learn the example of people's participation in conservation of forest. A very beautiful story is there. Let's learn that story from the textbook. So, people's participation has a long history in India. In 1731, the king of Jodhpur in Rajasthan asked one of his ministers to arrange food for constructing a new palace. In the year 1731, the king of Jodhpur in Rajasthan said to his minister that I want to construct a new palace and for that we need uh, we need wood. Okay? We need wood for the construction of our new palace. And that was said by King of Jodhpur to his minister in the year 9, 1731 in Rajasthan, Jodhpur. Okay, so his minister and workers went to a village. Okay, his minister and workers went to a village where Bishma community was living. Okay, and to, they went to get the wood. Okay, they want to, went to get the wood from the jungle. Okay, so. The minister and workers went to a forest near the village inhabited by Krishna community to cut down the trees. The minister and worker went to a village where Krishna community was living and they went for cutting down the trees to get the wood. Okay? So, now the Krishna community is known for its peaceful coexistence with nature. Okay? Krishna community actually lives peacefully and they live, they live peacefully with the nature. So they are known for their peaceful coexistence with the nature and a Vishnoi woman, Amrita Devi Vishnoi, showed an exemplary courage by hugging a tree and daring the king's men to cut her her first before cutting the tree. A woman called Amrita Devi Vishnoi opposed the man of uh, king and she said that if you want to cut the trees you have to cut me first okay if you, because they love nature they have they respect nature they worship nature that's why she argued to the worker of the man worker of the king that if you want to cut the trees then you have to cut me first okay and not just she she was not alone in this process her, she and her daughter and many other women also did the same thing. They hugged the tree and then they argued that if you want to cut the trees, then you have to cut us first. Okay? So, a Vishnu woman, Amrita Devi Vishnu, showed exemplary threat by hugging the tree and that daring king's men to cut her first before cutting the tree. The tree mattered much more to her than her own life. Sadly, king's men did not hate did not heed to her pleas and the cut they and cut down the tree along with the Amrita Devi. So sadly the or unfortunately the man of the king did not listen to her pleas and that plead and that's and they cut her along with the trees. And her three her three daughters and hundred other Vishnois followed her and thus they lost their lives saving the trees. So this is the only one example which is found in the history that to, to prevent deforestation or to prevent the trees from being cut down, some people lost their life. Such kind of example is not seen in the history elsewhere. Okay? So nowhere in the history we find a commitment of this magnitude when human beings sacrifice their lives for the cause of the environment. Okay? And that's why the government of India has recently instituted Amrita Devi Vishnoi Wildlife Protection Award for individuals or communities from rural areas that have shown exact extraordinary courage and dedication in protecting the life mines. Recognizing the bravery of Amrita Devi Vishnoi, Government of India has released one award called Amruta Devi Krishna Wildlife Protection Award and this award is not given to the people of cities. This award is given to the people who are coming from the rural areas and who show extraordinary courage and extraordinary commitment to protect the environment. And this award is not given to the people of the cities because it is it is given to the people of the rural areas. Okay? So uh, so it is given to the people or communities from the rural areas that have shown extraordinary courage and dedication in protecting the 
left hand leg. Okay, so let's talk about Chipko movement. Similar kind of movement has occurred in the year 1954 in the Himalayan region, and this movement was produced by Gadwal community of the Himalayan region. Okay, so you may have heard of the Chipko movement of Gadwal Himalayas in 1974. Local women showed enormous, enormous bravery in protecting the trees from the acts of the contractors by hugging them. The contractors went to cut the trees in the Himalayan regions and in the Himalayan region, Gadwal community was there. They opposed the men, men of the contractor and they did the same thing which was done by the Vishnu community. They hugged the tree and then they opposed the men of the contractor and this movement is known as Chipko movement in the year 1974 which was which was exhibited by Gadwal community of the Himalayan region. Okay? So people all over the world have acclaimed Chipko movement. This is known as Chipko movement. So, then realizing significance of participation by local community, the government of India in 1980s has introduced the concept of the joint forest management. See, government came to know that without people's participation, we cannot conserve forest. Okay? Government came to know that without people's participation or without local participation, we cannot conserve the forest. And that's why in the year 1980, they came up with a new policy which is known as Joint Forest Management, JMF. Okay? And in this policy, in this policy, uh, the provisions are such that the government has uh, government is the owner of the forest. Okay, government is the owner of the forest. But the local communities which participate in conservation of the forest get the right of the product. Okay, government local communities which participate in conservation of the forest get rights of the products which are produced in the forest. Okay, so. so in 1990s has introduced the concept of the forest so as to work closely with the local communities for protecting and managing, managing, managing of the forest. In return for their service to the forest, the communities get benefit of various forest products like fruits, gum, rubber, medicine and thus the forest can be conserved in a sustainable manner. See, the people who are conserving the forest will get products like rubber, fruits, gum, medicine etc. But the main owner of the forest will be government. Okay? So in this manner, it is known as joint forest management policy. Joint forest <laughs> management, sorry, joint forest management. Here, the government is the owner of the forest, but the people get right of the product. Okay? People get right of the product in return to the conservation of the forest. Okay? So with this topic, we complete our chapter 16 and we will begin with a new chapter in the next video. So I hope you have understood the topic well. Please read the textbook and ask if you have any doubts.